Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android Guy. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Android Weekly slash Android Q&A, where we go over all the latest news and topics that occurred during the week. Now, uh, two things before we get started. We have two giveaways going on right now. One is a Bluetooth speaker uh, that we reviewed recently. Uh, it's a Siphon, I believe. Uh, Bluetooth speaker that ends, I believe, on Wednesday, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, make sure to submit your entry for that giveaway. Second giveaway that's going on is going to be the giveaway that we just announced, which includes uh, our probably our best giveaway ever. It's an international giveaway too, so it's a bit different from the other ones. Um, and this one's going to be uh, you have some battery backup packs. You have uh, other things such as a phone, HTC One M8, we're going to give away. So make sure to enter in for all of those um, giveaways going on right now. All right, now the big topic of the day, the Note 5, everything you need to know about it. So, well, for the most part, I'm really curious to see what else Samsung uh, will have for us now. But the Note 5, we have new photos. Everything uh, is right here. So we have a auto eject pen and it looks of course very similar to the S6 in design as you can see, very similar to the S6. The big thing that uh, I am kind of questioning is why is it on the left side instead of the right side? Obviously there's more right-handed people out there. I'm just wondering if there is a reason for this, that it's on that side. I just am really curious about that. Um, however, uh, we also have a bit of a curved one, so I'm guessing that this is the uh, S, um, or this is the Note, and this is the one that everyone keeps calling the S6 Plus, um, which I just think it's going to be the uh, newer phone, basically, that's coming out. So yeah, so again, it is on the left side, as you can see. It's only on one side, of course, and uh, this is the new S Pen. It's supposed to be a thinner profile pen. And yeah, this is what the Note 5 looks like, guys. What do you think? Do you guys like this? Uh, by the way, big shout out to Sam Mobile. Almost all the news today comes from them. So a big shout out to them. Great website uh, for Samsung information. And they had a bunch this week. So the other thing is that the case is already confirmed that yes, this is uh, the way it's looking to be. Now, here's the thing. On this case, it is on the right side, which is where I expect the pen to be. So this is the only kind of conflicting thing we're getting, but at least that we are getting it that it, 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 it will be, no matter what, an auto-eject kind of pen. Now, how will this technology work is my concern because I'm just concerned that, like, it has a convenience of it being manual, the fact that you just pull it out so this should be interesting to see how this one works. And the big news that I am so happy, uh, if it's true, and apparently it is, that we will have four gigs of RAM on the Note 5. Huge, huge shout out for that. Um, I know I am very happy with it. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, the device will also be offered in four colors, black, gold, silver, and white. Not only that, though, but it's going to have the built-in wireless charging that the S6 enjoyed. I am pretty much happy all around with this information. I just, I, I'm very happy with this information. And yes, I, I love it. It's DDR4 RAM too, which uh, Samsung right now is one of the only, uh, one of three, I believe, smartphones that has DDR4 RAM. So really good for that. And it's going to have four gigs, just awesome all the way around. Note 5, the official dates according to Sam Mobile is August uh, 12th will apparently, uh, it'll be coming, I'm guessing the announcement by how it says. So the announcement will most likely be August 12th and it will go on sale August 21st. Uh, and this was updated, so at first, you know, we only heard about the 12th and that it will be announced in there and then later, uh, I guess it got updated it will be coming out August 21st. So yes, it will be then easily before the iPhone. Uh, the iPhone typically comes out in September. So Samsung is coming out probably about a month before the iPhone. My guess would be that Apple will come out on September 25th and the announcement will most likely be on uh, the 15th. 
It generally comes out 10 days after the announcement. The announcement's always on a Tuesday and it released on a Friday. So my guess is that yes, it will be almost a full, it will be a little bit more than a full month as uh, September 25th most likely will be when the iPhone comes out. And now Samsung apparently will be coming out on August 21st for their new product. Now, the other announcement that Sam Mobile just released and literally just released because Samsung just announced this is the Tab S2. So we have the official Tab S2 and I am severely disappointed. I'm so disappointed in this tablet, guys. Why is that? Because, of course, it is a four by three ratio tablet. Now, this is probably uh, the thinnest. I'm assuming that it will be the thinnest tablet um, ever at, and easily the thinnest for Samsung. Samsung has never gone this thin, but it's just not that much of an upgrade. And that's what really annoys me, to be honest. Uh, now, um, they will come in 32 gig and 64 gig. So this is a big change. There will be no, be no 16 gig version. And the eight inch will start at the Euro prices are always the same exact prices in the US. So it would be $399 for the eight inch and $499 for the 10 inch. I believe it's a little bit much for the Wi-Fi on the eight inch. I believe the Wi-Fi on the eight inch should be honestly 349. Uh, that's my opinion, uh, but I think that would do much better. Uh, the LTE variants uh, will cost $70 more, which is a really good price point. I would probably just get the LTE version just for that alone. I mean, if it's only $70 more, you never know when it might come in handy. But yes, this is what it looks like. Um, not sure if we're getting a premium material even on the back or if it's just going to be the same as that kind of plastic. Uh, but yeah, the four by three ratio is such a waste. And really, I don't see anything amazing about this tablet. I don't see anything that's like overwhelming or uh, makes it stand out. The four by three ratio is pathetic. Um, as you've heard me say before, no tablet on Android will ever be successful with that. So um, really, that's the part that I don't like. Uh, however, the probably one shining light is that their uh, book cover keyboard will have a trackpad, which is really unique in this uh, day and age uh, for t tablet keyboard. So that's one thing that's definitely um, an issue uh, that I've, I really do like that they're going to have that in the built-in keyboard. Now, I will say also that um, they are going to have the new fingerprint scanner that the S6 shared instead of the one that wasn't as good on the Tab S. But other than that, what is really the big, uh, what is, and this will be coming out in August apparently. Uh, however, this was internationally announced by Samsung, so countries may vary. But here's the thing. These are the two tablets. This is the one I currently own. This is the one that's coming out. This has a bigger screen. This has a better resolution. Why would I necessarily move up? And, th and that's my real big thing here, is why would I necessarily move up? So let's take a look at this. Tab S2 is lighter, thinner, yes. So it wins on that. Let's go to the screen sizes. The Tab S has a bigger screen on both tablets and their higher resolution. In terms of the two processors, Yes, the Tab S2 is going to have a better one, but my Tab S really has never struggled with anything. Three gigs of RAM. Cameras haven't even changed. Uh, I have the 32 gig. There will be a 64 gig, which is nice, but I have the 32 gig, so not, not a benefit for me here. Um, in terms of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, the same. And here's the thing. It has a smaller battery. Now, the resolution isn't as good, so you can argue that it might be around the same, for the eight inch, but for the 10 inch, that's almost 2000 milliamps. This is gonna have less battery life compared to this one. Now, um, it will have, again, Lollipop built in, but this one's already upgradable to Lollipop. So I, I really wanna know if any of you guys feel this way, would any of you guys extremely love to get the Tab S2 instead of the Tab S right now, when the Tab S will drop at least $100? So I'm really curious if you guys uh, would want to get this tablet or do you feel like me and it's just not really an upgrade. Um, I think this is gonna hurt Samsung to be honest. 
can't wait to see what it comes out with and can't wait to see what it has. I also, uh, looking at Sam Mobile's pictures, I see Handcom Office, but I'm not sure if Microsoft Office is gonna come free on here like it did with the Tab A. The Tab A, you got uh, Microsoft Office for free. And I kind of think I see it there, right in here, um, that it might be Microsoft Apps, which uh, as long as you get it free, I mean, that's a huge plus. Um, and that would be the one plus that I would say would save it. Obviously, we'll wait to get it in the studio to review it. But uh, right now, I, I, I have no desire to move up. Maybe when I get it in my hands, maybe it'll look and feel so much better. But as of right now, don't really care to. All right. Let's move on to the questions that were asked during the week. So if you have a question, make sure to email me at asktheandroidguy at gmail.com. And for some reason, that did not come up today. Um, yeah, I'll do that later. But yeah, sorry, it's normally on the bottom right here, but just email me at asktheandroidguy at gmail.com if you have any questions that you want me to answer. All right, so uh, lovebug69, um, oh, Deborah ask, um, I enjoy your program, uh, I enjoy your program, thank you. Um, how will Samsung improve the Gear S watch? So the next Gear S watch. So how will they improve it? We, we, we have gotten so much confirmation that it's going to be a round design. So the look will be much better. Also, I would hope that they're gonna have more bands. This is a metal band that took me almost, what, six months to come out? Uh, for the ta for the Gear S. Um, so I, I hope they have more bands at launch and at launch, not later, at launch. Because look, they promised a diesel band. Never saw it. They promised a Swarovski band. I believe that one did come out, but obviously I'm not going to get it. Uh, so it's, it's things like that. Like you need to have accessories at launch. That is really important. And I think that's one of the biggest misses. Because look, if... The, the plain fact of the matter is, if you're a sales rep in those stores, if you're a sales rep in Verizon, T-Mobile, Best Buy, any of them, they get rated on how many accessories they sell you. So guess what? If they don't have accessories in their stores on day one, they're not going to sell your product. They're going to tell you, oh, no, you know, the new Note 5 isn't that great because I don't have that many cases for it. So, you know, you, know, you should just get the Note 4. And, yeah, we have these cool cases over here for it. They will actually do that and manipulate that. So that's the biggest thing that I, I think the Gear S will have a new interface. Obviously, it's going to have a round design. And I think those are going to be the big upgrades that we see from Samsung. Am I right? I could be completely wrong, but that's what I think. Uh, Chris asks, um, I... How do I add a cloud storage option as an option when I want to remove files from my phone? I have an S6 Edge, download various cloud storages to my device, but appears only option is Google Drive uh, to move files. Um, so you're, you're wondering how to move files from your from the My Files folder. Um, and the thing is, is actually you're going about it the wrong way. Uh, the right way would actually be to do it, um, instead of going to downloading the My Files one, you can download a third-party file manager. So ES, um, um, ES File Manager or ES Launcher or something like that um, it is one of the well-known one. Another one is Astro File Manager. But really, you can just grab whatever file you want, hold it down, hit share, and then share it with whatever cloud storage you have. Uh, and that's that's that simple. Now, what are the cloud storages I recommend? Um, well, I do have Google Drive, um, and you get 25 gigs for free. And the real part about Google Drive, actually, is, um, is that now Google Photos don't count towards it. So Google Photos is probably the best um, storage option I can give you. And that's because it saves all of your photos and videos at 1080p and at 16 megapixels. So you almost lose no quality on every current smartphone on the market. Great, great device uh, and cloud storage base. And that's what I would recommend to anyone. Go download Google Photos. Now, this is not the Google Photos you have pre-installed in your phone. That comes with Google Plus and you should get rid of it. Uh, but... Google Photos is a new uh, service that you do not need to link to Google Plus. You do not have a Google Plus account. It's all standalone, and that's what you should get for a cloud storage solution. 
for all your photos. And then uh, you can use Google Drive or Dropbox. I use for a lot of files. And of course, since you have an S6, you know you got um, 100 gigs of cloud storage from Microsoft OneDrive. If it's not pre-installed in your phone, you download the OneDrive app and simply do this. You sign in through a Hotmail, a uh, Xbox Live, or a Outlook email, and you will have a 100 gigs free from Microsoft for two years. Um, a di I do not know how to pronounce your name. I'm not going to even attempt it. Um, AO, let's just call you that. AO, uh, hi, do you think uh, Google will implement split screen um, multitasking like Samsung does? Uh, yes, they will actually. Uh, it is currently a feature that was found for the newest version of Android. So Android M looks like it will have split screen. Will that be on all devices or just Nexus? That remains to be seen. Uh, why has it taken so long to implement this feature? It's the main reason I have Samsung devices. Um, the main reason I think it's taken so long is because I think Samsung had um, some certain technology patents. LG then added it, um, and it, like they got accused of stealing it, and it was a whole legal thing. Uh, but yeah, so th there, there's been a couple of things, but also certain patents you have to pay for. So for like a multi-user, on a phone, I believe that's a Windows patent. So everyone that has multi-user on a phone has to pay Microsoft for that. So just to give an idea. Um, why does it seem that Samsung has lag? Um, so basically, Samsung is really lagging. He has an O4, and it's like all three gigs of RAM are taken up. And it's just, you know, he's hesitant to do Samsung again because of the lag that it's had. Um, he thinks HTC is the best phone, but they don't make phablets. Um, I really disagree with HTC being the best phone because they suck at battery life and camera um, in terms of their last uh, last phone by far. Um, it doesn't have a good camera or a great battery life. Um, and so, yes, I, I definitely disagree with that. However, in terms of a phablet, HTC most likely will come out with a phablet before the end of the year because they are losing money like crazy. They lost over $300 million in just a quarter. In just three months, they lost over $300 million. That's That's not going to stand. I mean, they will go out of business if they do that. Uh, so, yes, uh, they, they will release a phablet, I believe, before the end of this year. Whether I would recommend it over a device like the Note, which will have 4 gigs of RAM, and uh, which will have um, better memory management, that I, I would probably lean more towards if you're looking for the best of the best, especially if you're coming from a Note 2. I think you'll fall in love with the Note 5 if you didn't already like the look of it right now. Um, all right, and the last question, uh, Leonard, um, Leonard, uh, Leonard, um, help me please. I have a note, uh, Edge, and it's running stock, and it's running stock. So I'm guessing you're running stock Android, which my question would be how you got it on there, but let's go uh, on to that. I have a major lag on my phone. It's very slow, and... Open and close apps. I have a uh, clean master sometimes, but phones are really slow. Um, cool. So yeah. Um, so yeah, Leonard. Um, the thing I would honestly recommend to do. So one, if you have stock Android on there, I'm guessing you rooted it, so you could have manipulated it somehow. And this ROM just isn't as good at cleaning up memory as it should be. Um, however, memory leakage is an issue on Android uh, Lollipop right now in, in general. So even if you had the regular touch, it's not that it necessarily would be much better. However, I do recommend that uh, if you did an update to Lollipop uh, with that ROM, I recommend doing a clean installation. Now, you can back up pretty much everything with um, uh, Samsung keys on your computer. And that will back up everything on the phone uh, to your computer first. And then you can wipe it out and then reinstall everything. Uh, what this will do is basically it'll back up all of your text messages, your Wi-Fi connections, your uh, wallpapers, all that kind of stuff. Um, everything, photos, videos, all that kind of stuff will be backed up and then reinstalled on your new computer. Or sorry, on your new phone once it's reset. Uh, it sounds like that's what you need, though. It sounds like you need a fresh start. Uh, because it's happening that often at that much of a rate. Um, Clean Master can only do so much, and honestly, like I said, Lollipop does have these issues no matter what. 
So yes, that is a known issue all around. All right, uh, now, if you guys have any questions, make sure to ask in the comment section down below and I will start answering them now. So ask all of your questions you want me to answer right now in the comment section down below. Answer them every week live, so ask your questions right now. Uh, Castro asks, um, I, have, I have an S6. I unlock developer options. What is it used for? A lot. <laughs> uh, developer options can actually be used for a lot. Uh, the first set, of course, is development. So if I'm developing an app, I will use these uh, simply to figure out uh, certain things about the phone and how it's properly loading my apps that I've created. Now, um, if you've ever seen how to speed up, so I have a video on my channel saying how to speed up the Galaxy S6. Um, you reduce the animation scale on the drawing category in developer options in order to make your phone move faster. Uh, that's one out of four steps to make the S6 move faster, but it's a great start. So that would be uh, one usage for developer options. Another uh, usage is say, um, so uh, Leonard just had a huge issue with memory and at the very bottom of developer options, you can actually have it so no apps can run in the background or only like three apps or two apps can run in the background and nothing else can run. So you're never gonna have a memory issue. The only thing is, is you're gonna have a lot of crashing apps because apps are gonna try to run in the background and then they're not gonna be allowed to. And it's just, it doesn't, do that great of an experience. It's extreme cases. And I've gotten frustrated with my phones at times too uh, because Olipop sucks and I can't wait to get rid of it. Um, so yeah, no, I, I completely understand this and it definitely is uh, an issue. So that would be another thing you could do in developer options. You can also um, you know, allow things to happen to your cell phone through a computer uh, that is not um, by default, which is called USB debugging. Those are just some of the things you can do, but you can also pretty much mess up your phone in developer options. So I wouldn't highlight anything unless you know what you're doing. So yeah, that's my advice for developer options. All right, do we have any other questions? Screen by Samsung for 2018 on a TV. Screen by Samsung for 2018 on a phone or a TV. Do you think about the 11K? Um, 11K, um, you know, I don't know how far we're gonna go in terms of screen resolution past, uh, cause there already is a K out there, there is a K. So I think by 2018, you'll see some 8K TVs, but really I think there's gonna be something else before that um, to go mainstream, simply because of this. Right now, like right now, Samsung this year focused on SUHD, which is just a more vibrant um, and better uh, color spectrum um, compared to previous years. And that's really what was different this year. Now, um, and you also had, you know, instead of a curved TV, a bendable TV last year. So you had that. And I think more of that kind of stuff is gonna happen. Honestly, for phones, I don't want more than 2K. I know everyone's waiting on, oh my God, I can't wait for the phones to be 4K displays. Your eyes can't see that. The human eye cannot see a 4K display on this size of a screen. It can't be done. You're, no one's eyes are that good. So I don't see the point in it, really. Um, not to mention, as we go up in resolution, we lose battery life. If these screens stopped at 1080p, we would have probably about 30% more battery life. So yeah, I'm not I'm I'm not I'm not a big fan of going higher on a phone really. I think 2K is perfect. We don't need to go anymore. We're good. 2K is perfect. We have you know 2560 by 1600 on the Tab S. Perfect 2K display. 14 um the um 1440 or 12. 1256 by 1440 on these ones are perfectly fine. We're good. We don't need any more. We're fine. Um, that's where I should say that phones should stop. Will they stop there? Probably not. I think we will get a 4K screen. Possibly the Note 6 next year will be a 4K screen. I don't really care. I really don't. I think battery life should be over screen resolution. 
when screen resolution is up to a 2K display. No one cares anymore. That, that's, it's, it's, I don't think it's necessary past that. So yes, um, that, that's my thing. Um, but yeah, in terms of TVs, I believe by 2018, we will have 8K TVs. Um, will they be high selling? No, they'll probably at that point, even that's, I mean, that's only three years from now, right? So by that point, I think they're only going to really be closer to like what 4K TVs were two years ago in terms of sales. Like they won't really sell that much. Um, that they'll be, you know, in the small, small percentage. Uh, I think 4K TVs will become the norm by that point. Three years from now, we'll see 4K has kind of become, you know, more in the realm, and you're going to see less and less 1080, uh, less and less 1080 at the 46 inch and up. I believe that from 46 inch and up, they will all be 4K TVs by then. Um, besides that, though, I, I don't really see it. Uh, if you're coming in live, I see it was getting more viewers. Ask any question you want, and I'll answer it right now. Uh, so ask any question you want right now, and I'll answer it. Um, so yeah, if they're if they're 4K, um, I, I see that 46 inch and up TVs will have that, and that will kind of be the standard. Um, I do believe you'll cease to exist 1080. Uh, sorry, 720p's, 720 TVs, will, 720 yeah. 720p TVs will not be in existence in three years. I think they'll all be 1080. You'll never find a 720 again. All right. Uh, Kronos, hey, what's up, Kronos? Um, you mentioned the Tab S2, but do you know if they will ever come out with a Note Tab again? Not this year. I doubt it this year. I, com I sincerely doubt it. Uh, they won't. They won't this year. Uh, whether... They will realize the air. look. I, I, you guys know I'm a Samsung fan. You know I, I, I appreciate their work, but I'm not biased to any company. If they make bad products, I'm gonna call them out on it. I do not like Samsung tablets this year. I, I'm taking a pass. I'm, I mean, who knows? Look, I, I'm always open minded. So when I get the tablet, I review it. I think it's great. I think it's amazing. I will eat all my words. I'm like, man, you have to understand this great tablet. But I do not like Samsung tablets this year. I think they won't sell as much. And then next year, they're going to need a revamp again. And I hope that they come out with a high-end Note tablet. I'm actually hoping that that's what they do at CES next year in January or maybe MWC in February. That's what I'm hoping for. If it'll happen or not, we'll see. Um, but that's what I'm hoping for. I think going four by three was a huge mistake. It was a misstep. And as much as I defend them, they're trying to be like Apple in that aspect. I mean, why else would you go for a four by three ratio in the same exact screen resolution as them? It's, it's, I don't like it. I just don't. And that's, that's me. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I don't care for it. But no, there will not be a Note tablet coming out this year. Um, the only kind of substitute for the Note tablet was the Tab A with S Pen. It's a 9.7 inch screen. It's a horrible screen resolution. Um, but look, I have a friend that loves it. So again, it depends on the person. Um, it suits its needs. It suits all of his needs. Uh, and when that one went back, uh, but that one is $349. And yeah, that's it. Again, not my thing, but yeah, that that's the only that's the only note uh, tablet you're getting from Samsung this year. Uh, in terms of features, phones are slowing down innovation. What do you think will happen? Um, well, I think Danny, um, I think what we're going to see with phones in terms of, I do think they slow down innovation. I, I would agree with that statement. I think the real innovation is going to come over the next um, over the next three years. I think we're going to see improvement in battery life. Um, I, I think that's you know as we put all these features in a phone, I think that's the one thing that really should be focused on more is battery life. Um, I really want longer battery life, doesn't everyone? Um, so battery life, I definitely think will be one. Um, I think battery life will have a breakthrough um, as Samsung just reported uh, what 
three three weeks ago, I think I reported on it, that their battery life, um, they, they found a way to double their battery life with the same size. So the size of an S6 can fit double the battery life that it currently has. Uh, that's huge, and that would be great. Uh, so yeah, that, that's one thing that would be great is better battery life. What else would be great? Well, um, I think we eventually will see the bendable displays within the next three years. And by bendable display, I do not mean a curved display. I mean a actual bendable display no more glass cannot be broken. Uh, I think we'll see that in the next three years. I honestly do. Will it be expensive? Yes. That's why we haven't seen it yet. Samsung has that technology. Samsung has a transparent phone, transparent battery, all that stuff right now. Are you going to pay $3,000 for a smartphone? No, and neither will the general public. That's why you haven't seen it out. It's because it's still in research and development. So those are things we know that are coming. Uh, iris scanners instead of uh, fingerprint scanner too, that's coming. Um, I, I think uh, one thing coming out from Samsung actually this year uh, that I cannot wait for uh, is Samsung Pay. Um, for those of you who don't know, Samsung Pay works on any credit card machine, anyone. You don't have to have NFC. It can be a five-year-old credit card machine, doesn't matter, it works. And that is innovative. That is something that Google Wallet, Apple Pay, uh, SoftCard, all these failed attempts have not won because NFC is expensive and you know mom and pop restaurants aren't gonna switch to it, but this actually allows it to work. So yeah. All right, let's see. Um, any major improvements from the Note 4 to the Note 5? Four gigs of RAM is a pretty big improvement in my opinion. I mean, that's that's a pretty good improvement. Uh, I, I would, I'm very happy with that. Uh, so four gigs of RAM alone, I would say is a huge improvement. Also the camera quality will be a huge improvement because you're gonna have every feature the S6 had, which the S6 compared to the Note 4, the reason why the S6 beats out the Note 4 is simply because it has better auto. So if you just take your phone out of your pocket and take a photo, it will look better on the S6 than the Note 4 because it has better automatic photo taking. It also has HDR on your front camera and your selfies are gonna look much better. So the camera will be improved in the Note 5 as well. Uh, what else? That we'll have to wait till the announcement, which according to Sam Mobile is going to be on August 12th. So a little bit less than a month away now, uh, but those are gonna be the two we know about. Uh, you know, faster processor, we're not sure about battery life yet, that's another mystery. Uh, the real mystery, by the way, is I tried to look, but no render of the Note 5 yet has it from the side. So that's the big question, because that's where the SIM card tray goes, right? So will we have expandable memory? I'm honestly doubting it at this point. I'm honestly doubting it. Um, I always knew we weren't going to have removable battery. That's pretty much confirmed. If you look at those photos, no removable battery on the Note 5. No. I don't really miss it, to be honest. I really don't miss it. I have two phones that have built-in battery. I don't care. It really doesn't bother me. Why? Because this phone charges insanely quick. It, if your phone charges quickly, I don't really see an issue with it. And I have wireless charging. So I, I really don't see an issue with it anymore. If my phone freezes, guess what? Power, volume down, 10 seconds. The phone thinks you removed the battery. Why do you need a removable battery? That's the question that I always say to people. Why? Why do you think you do? Um, th that, that's my thing. And you know what? If it's really an issue, you can even get the new the Mophie packs for them too. Look, uh, Incipio just released actually one that was really funny because it's a Mophie, so battery backup case with the micro SD card. I will be reviewing that one uh, just because I know so many people want that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you, there's ways around. There's always ways around it. Am I curious about it? Absolutely, but yeah, uh, that's the thing. Uh, so yeah, so that's the main thing on it right now is that I rec uh, for that purpose. All right. Um, can you recommend a task manager for the S6? I have a sprint version. Uh, Clean Master is the best one. And here's the thing. I actually hate all of these kind of task managers. I think most of them are full of shit. 
Uh, but right now, because of Lollipop, it does help, I feel. Especially with the issue of uh, the CPU overheating uh, your processor when it gets hot because it's running so many apps and it can't can't stop running them. That's the main thing of, of it that's having an issue. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I, I, that's the one I would recommend if I would recommend any. Get rid of Lookout though. If you have Sprint or any carrier, get rid of Lookout. It's such a piece of crap. Get rid of it. Um, Kronos, why can't the Gear S take off as much as the Apple Watch? Do you think it's because it's only running Tizen? Yes, I do believe that Tizen is the thing that's hurting it, but it's also what I wouldn't give up. Uh, honestly, I don't like Android Wear as much as Tizen. I prefer Tizen to Android Wear. However, I just wish that Android Wear would improve to Tizen's level, and then I would easily take Android Wear over Tizen. Tizen's a better battery life, hands down. It's a better battery life. That's why Samsung originally went with it, because the Gear 2 had a two-day battery life, uh, up to a three-day battery life. I always got two days, but I know I know some friends that got three days with it. And Android Wear, you can't do that. It's Android Wear, every single one, look, the, where is it? The LG Urbane that I have is supposed to have the longest battery life, and no, it doesn't. It still lasts a day. I've never gotten more than a day with it. So that, that's the thing that uh, why Tizen, I would say, is better in just that aspect alone. Also, I believe Tizen's easier and you get full apps. And it's just, I think the user interface is a little bit better on Tizen. However, I love the, I love the way apps integrate much better with Android Wear. I like a lot of things of Android Wear. I like the Google integration, of course, because I love being able to archive my Gmail and reply to my Hangouts on the watch. That's something I can't do with Tizen. However, overall, I just feel that that's not, a, that's not where I think it's going. Um, and once Android Wear has things like picking up a call uh, on the watch, not on anything else, uh, other stuff like that, that's what's really going to be um, more of a necessary improvement for it. So yes. All right, guys, I think that's everything. Uh, thank you, as always, for watching. Make sure you enter those giveaways, guys. I'm really excited about the giveaways. It's, it's the highest amount of uh, responses I've gotten for giveaways, too, by the way. So if you haven't done it yet, make sure to do it. I think I got over 30 submissions in just a couple of hours. So yeah, make sure you enter those giveaways. Thank you, as always, for watching. This is RSTKY, the Android guy.